is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, 204 the time. How you doing? You doing okay? All right. Whatever you do, try to catch the last hour of the show today. Um, I've got a guest that I've had on before. Um, you've probably seen him on Sean show or Fox News or all over the place. But we're going to try and hash out this black, white, white, black thing. Uh, I every day there's a story of racism, real or perceived. So we're going to try and uh, hash this out. And uh, this all s- stemmed from this uh, young. Remember the young girl that called uh, first thing uh, uh, on the. Oh gosh, what's her name? Morgan Roof, uh, Dylan Roof, the the guy that killed nine black parishioners in church. Uh, his sister was arrested at her high school with. Uh, a knife and marijuana and, I don't know, pepper spray and something else. And it wasn't so much that. I don't know what kind of knife it was. But it was the the threats and the, all the stuff she said on social media. And my question is, had Dylan Roof posted that kind of stuff, would we have taken a second look? Uh, I mean, yeah, Most of the stuff I can't even say over the year. But you remember her, right, Lee? I do. Uh, she was from South Lake. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk uh, talk to a guest about this and try to hash this thing out. Uh, it is Friday, and um, of course, uh, through the week, I know it's very very difficult to get in on the talk lines. Um, that's uh, that is not lost on me. And uh, so every once in a while, we try to make up for that. If there was something we did during the week you tried to get in on and couldn't uh, couldn't get in on the talk line or simply just didn't have time. Uh, today is your day. All right. Well, uh, just about anything uh, will go in the first couple of hours. I got some things I want to do, but 1 800 288 WBAP, 1 800 288 9227. And of course, we broadcast out of Dallas, Fort Worth every day, Monday through Friday from 2 to 5 Central Time. Uh, but we're heard all over the country, coast to coast, and it's a toll free number 1 800 288 WBAP. Um, so, uh, if you couldn't get in today's your day, we'll take uh, just about any of your calls. Um, I, I said in the promo that, you know, a lot of people are, uh, are saying, you know, what, what do we do about the, the illegal, uh, aliens? What do we do? They don't call them illegal aliens. Forgive me. Lee, don't let me make that mistake again. They're undocumented, undocumented immigrants. Shame they, on you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're immigrants just in the same way, you know, the tired, the poor, the hungry, the weary came to Ellis Island in the shadow of the statue of uh, Liberty. They're, they're immigrants. They just don't have their documents. They left them on uh, the dresser on the way out of town from wherever they came from. All right. So uh, yeah, it doesn't sting quite as much, does it? Well, California has appointed, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they call him an unauthorized immigrant. Unauthorized. Okay, uh, that's the same thing as illegal. California has appointed an illegal immigrant to an official state post. That's a first. It also functions as the state's largest, well, I don't know if it's the largest, I think maybe tipping off uh, 800 people that ICE is coming is the largest, but this is the state's uh, latest act of defiance against Donald Trump. Uh, state Senate President Pro Tem Kevin De Le- excuse me, I got to say this right, Kevin De Leon. How was that? That was pretty good, wasn't it? Kevin De Leon. Okay. Um, the Pro Tem President Kevin De Leon is a Los Angeles Democrat running for the U.S. Senate on an anti-Trump platform. Well, aren't they all? Uh, he announced that uh, a 33-year-old attorney, uh, Lizbeth Mateo, would serve as a member of the California Student Opportunity and Access Program Project Grant Advisory Committee. I'm not making it up. That's the name of this program. I, they don't have business cards because 
it's too long. Uh, the California Student Opportunity and Access Program Project Grant Advisory Committee. There you go. Uh, yeah, while Donald Trump fixates on walls, California will continue to concentrate on opportunity. That's according to Mr. De Leon. Um, opportunity, well, what, what, what are you talking about? Born in Mexico, Ms. Mateo came to L.A. with her parents when she was 14. Um, yeah. Um, she's not quite a dreamer. She's a went to sleep dream and woke up her, I guess. Um, you know, luck. Have you ever been to California <laughs> for any length of time? Uh, I broadcasted out of San Diego. In San Diego, for a long time, was the last bastion of conservatism in, in a state where everybody's walking around bumping into palm trees. I, I mean, and it's not even so much anymore. It's, it's pretty much useless as far as a place to live. Um, I broadcasted out of uh, San Diego for, I think, about 16, a little over 16 years. I flew back and forth from here to there every 10, 12 days. Lots and lots of frequent flyer miles. But that was part of the agreement I had with the uh, the company when they hired me. I said, that's fine, but you got to fly me home, you know, and so on. Um, if you're looking for homelessness, if you're looking for filth, if you are looking for every baseless thing under the sun when it comes to human beings, uh, if you're looking for uh, regulation that puts most people out of business, if you're looking for, you go to California. That's where you go. Now, granted, not bad for a long weekend maybe in San Diego. Um, but it, to live and work and recreate and try to raise a family there, forget it. <laughs> you know, every time they talk about secession, I, I yeah, do it, do it, do it. Um, it's, it's nuts. It, it's, the whole place is upside down. It's just like every liberal-run city. Baltimore's that way, too. Chicago's that way. I mean, crime is rampant, um, homeless are just everywhere. It's just a horrible, horrible quality of life. You can't even call it a quality of life. It's, uh, you know, it's the bottom of the barrel. And it's because of all the liberal policies. If you don't hold people to standards or levels of responsibility, uh, then that's what you get. Uh, it's not too tough to figure out. All right. Let me check the afternoon drive for you. Let's start that because it's starting to heat up a little bit out there. And then we'll come back. We'll open up the lines. It's Friday uh, for the first little bit of the show. If you didn't get a chance to get in through the week, if you didn't uh, to get have your voice heard on a specific topic, well, every once in a while we try to make up for that because I do realize it's kind of tough to get in. So here we go. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. You know, I got something else to say about that dirty A word. You know, you know, do you know what word I'm talking about, Lee? The A word? Yes. Which, which, which word would that be? Amnesty. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, start the go-go's. All right, your call straight ahead. All right, uh, 16 minutes after the hour. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion. Your, uh, your voice on the issues of the day, your opinion. And uh, every once in a while, we try to do this because it's very difficult to get in through the week on the talk lines. I get that. Uh, so we'll let you uh, take the show in just about any direction you would like. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Let's go to uh, Sweetwater. Talk to Sean. Sean, how you doing? I'm doing good, Rick. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Hey, um, I wanted to ask you, I've heard Sean Hannity from time to time talk about how Hillary was uh, exonerated before we even investigated and whatnot, and I guess it was just to keep her in the race. But what do you think would have happened with the country if she had been, you know, removed from the presidential race because of that? Okay, what would have? Okay, I'm not clear on your question, Sean. Forgive me. What? Uh... Well, uh, you know how like everybody pitched a uh, royal fit when President Trump. One right, they didn't necessarily pitch a royal fit when Hillary. I mean, when Hillary cheated Bernie Sanders, Sanders right. out of 
his deal. But if, if they would have removed Hillary from the race because of this scandal, if they would have charged her with gotcha. a crime, right. then you, what, I mean, what do you think the outrage and the uproar would have been? Uh, as far as uh, Hillary being... Well, okay, I think your question is twofold. Um, first, you have to know that uh, Bernie was, was peeding Hillary pretty good. Um, and that's why uh, the Democratic uh, leadership, um, along with the, the Clinton campaign, uh, worked behind the scenes to basically cut Bernie Sanders off at the knees, which didn't bother me necessarily. I, I'm no fan of socialism. Uh, but as I, as I looked at that, I thought, wow, you know, they sh- if that thing had a played out, I think Bernie Sanders would have beaten Hillary Clinton. Uh, I truly do. I mean, he just about the time uh, he got the axe from his own party, um, he was, I mean, he was, it was a groundswell of support. It was, it was amazing, almost amazing, as amazing as Trump's win. Um, first of all, it was never going to happen because you had the Democrats and I believe some Republicans and the media uh, all working hand in glove uh, to make sure Hillary came out on top. And as far as the Comey exoneration before uh, indictment, uh, that's just hand in glove um, working with uh, with the Obama administration at the time. Hillary uh, was the foregone conclusion. Uh, it's, it's hard to have outrage. Well, it's sort of like I tell kids. Um, about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, uh, it's hard to miss something you didn't know you had. Uh, And if you don't teach them that, then they don't miss it. There was no way, no way the media, the FBI, or anyone else was going to do anything uh, that, uh, you know, led to Hillary Clinton being taken out of the running. It was just not going to happen. That's why Trump's win, I think, was so surprising to so many people. I mean, everybody and their dog, um, you know, had been uh, checked off as, you know, Hillary supporting. No matter what, she's not going to be indicted. I mean, good Lord, if you and I did 10% of what Hillary Clinton we know about, uh, we'd be under the jail. And when I say what we know about, I'm sure there's a lot we don't know about. Oh, yeah. How bad of a candidate do you have to be to cheat so hard? And still lose so bad. That see, that's the point. The, uh, you know, Hillary. I think at last count has forty-two different excuses for not winning. The fact is, I think it was Clinton saturation, uh, just like with Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Uh, you know that that story eventually got to a saturation point. I know because I was behind a mic every day, and it, it was like you know people said you know if I did care at one time, I don't anymore. It was just too much of the same thing over and over and over again. I think there was Clinton saturation by virtue of her name, Hillary saturation. We had heard nobody trusted her, not even people in her own party. People, you know, some of the worst stories that came out about Hillary came out from people she worked with. Um, She was just a bad candidate. But you're right. To lose after cheating as badly as she did... Uh, tells you she was a flawed candidate from day one. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad I didn't vote for her. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it. Uh, nobody trusts her. The people in her own party, in her own campaign, didn't trust her. It, you know, every 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 time someone gets close to a Clinton, um, you know, something bad happens. There's a scandal, and she's always the Teflon mom. It just slides right off. As far as any you know, legal recourse or legal responsibility. But when it comes to a politician, uh, she is a pathetic shadow of her former self. She's never, ever going to be what she once was in the arena of politics. She's just, uh, you know, she took it too far. Well, she didn't really do anything in the arena of politics other than just follow her name. Well, she, she profit, you know, the Clinton Foundation and Benghazi and Fast and Furious. I mean, good Lord, we could spend the rest of the show just going through the things she's been involved with. Um, it, and it's, you know, the private email server. And a lot of people said, I don't care about that. I have email. Well, yes, you do. Um, but you don't have a government email system in your basement. I mean, you know, you, the, the way she gets away with things, quite honestly, Sean, is because they are so convoluted. The things that she was involved with 
we're so convoluted and and you know spread in so many different areas involves so many people you would have to take you know a, a full newspaper just to explain it then decide whether uh, she's guilty or not i mean she's she's a pro at that oh yeah and but uh, we're they're talking about a new special counsel to investigate all this stuff all it's going to be doing is a waste of time because she ain't gonna get pop for nothing it's exactly hillary clinton is never going to be donning an orange jumpsuit it's never going to happen it's, you know it's just like this russia investigation you know i said at some point okay it's taken a year you found no collusion other than um there's a, a lot of muddy water where russia and the clinton foundation are concerned and why would uh, you know they be in bed together unless someone was selling off access you know at this point nobody cares they just want her to go away and you know i said the other day how much money how much time money and resource uh, resources have we spent in chasing ghosts under the bed in this Russia investigation? I just got it today. It's here someplace. Um, in the first two months of the Russia investigation, they spent $7 million. And it went on for a year. You know, by, by you know, I'm, I don't need a calculator to figure that one out. You know, the American taxpayer got, uh, taxpayer got screwed on this deal. Big time. You know, that's a, I don't know about you, but that's a, that's a lousy return for your investment. First two months of the Russia investigation cost $7 million. It went on for a year. The results were exactly what the Republicans said they were. Nada. A big zero. All right. Uh, Sean, I appreciate the call. We'll take your calls in just about any direction today. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. We'll step aside very, very quickly, uh, bring you up to speed on the very latest news with uh, Eric Bushman. We'll also uh, check your afternoon drive if you're trying to get out of town and back with your calls. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 2.33 the time. It is Friday. Glad you're along. We uh, do this every once in a while. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to get in on the talk lines uh, through the week. I realize that. So uh, every once in a while, we'll let you take the show in just about any direction you want to go. And that's what we're doing today. 1-800-288-WBAP. Let's, uh, where are we going here? Let's go to Jacob. And uh, Jacob in Fort Worth. How you doing, Jacob? Okay. Hey, uh, I'm one of those truck drivers you like to uh, reach out to every now and then. <laughs> but, uh, How you doing? I, I, I'm doing great. I'm actually moving down the road a little bit right now on a hands-free device, of course. But uh, I agree with you 100% on, on a lot of what you talked about with these drivers. I try to stay in the right lane and, and keep it moving at a decent flow, but I'm looking at a guy right now on the hammer down lane creating that moving wall. It's, anyhow, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, it's... You know, I know it's something everybody likes to gripe about, but uh, for some reason, um, you know, people say, well, the drivers in California are nuts. Yeah, they are, but they don't hold a candle to, to Dallas traffic. I mean, they just don't. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, on another note, I wanted to talk to the, uh, the school violence and things like that. Um, on that note, uh, I think that the responsibility of raising the kids is uh, solely going to be at home and i'll touch base on that because i lived in uh all right okay go you're cutting out on me there uh jacob you live where i lived in texas for i was born in texas and then at about three years old my uh my parents split up. and then around six or seven we kind of raising those questions of who is my mom where is she at what did she do we found her. We moved over there. That was a chaotic situation and uh, exposed to a lot of things I shouldn't have been exposed to. Ultimately, one Christmas, my dad came out there and found out, well, he's taking us home all of a sudden. Well, I came back to the school district here, kind of a different kid. I really didn't have a social group. I really didn't have any friends, didn't have much, and I was really, really had a chip on my shoulder. A lot of that backfired in my face. Out of principle, that uh, took snippets and stuff at me. She even said one day, and this echoes in my head every time I hear a school shooting, is I was walking through, because I was the youngest of three boys, 
and I had some hand-me-down clothes from my brother. So they were real baggy on me. Well, she told me I look like a bag of potatoes, and I have the potential of being the next shooter based on the way that my haircut was. And that was her words. Now, wow. the reason why I say it all goes back to home is my dad inherited that issue of me where I was at. And he constantly, constantly, constantly stayed with us, plugged into us, and believe it or not, he was conservative. He took us hunting, he took us fishing, but he never really left us out. So it all comes back to him, a single father. He worked for the utility company, probably some 70 hours a week, but he still managed to keep us on the ground. And uh, ultimately, I ended up joining the military. I got, uh, got, got out in 2016, went in in 06, uh, got tons of college credits. This uh, Class A CDL is just a piece of the grander picture that you know I'm working on, but you can't say that the school is the issue. You can't say that you know students and this, that, and the other are, are what influence this. Um, wholeheartedly, it comes back to one great man, and that's my dad. It very well could have been me if I didn't have any structure at the house. So. You know what? You're you're probably right, Jacob. Uh, Jacob, I mean, it's it's. Uh, first of all, I thank you for the service, and I mean that sincerely. If you know anything about the show, uh, but ultimately, it's the parents. You know, I'm sorry, I said it yesterday. There's no way that my son could have a sawed-off barrel of a rifle and a fuse cord in his bedroom just laying on his bed uh, without me knowing about it. Uh, I'm sorry if you're going to have it. You know, it's, somebody emailed this to me uh, yesterday or the day before, and it's so ironic because I've been saying this for 20 years in this business. I've been a uh, television and radio talk show host for the better part of 25 years, and I've probably said this for the last 20 years. You know, you have to demonstrate some proficiency and get a license to drive a car, Cert certainly to fly a plane. Um, if you're in trade, in the trades, uh, you have to demonstrate proficiency before you can do certain things via OSHA. I mean, just about everything you have to have a license for or demonstrate some proficiency in, but you can be the biggest mind-numbed idiot wrapped in a moron and spit kids out like a Pez dispenser. Okay, well, who's raising those kids? And not everybody is an idiot. They just don't know how to parent. You know, I hear, well, the schools need to stop that. It's like saying, well, the government, you know, the government, you know, go back and read that. I'm a big student of the Founding Fathers because, and I'll tell you why. Those guys had no clue what was going to happen. You know, they fled uh, a theology and a government rolled into one. They knew they didn't want that. That's why everybody gets so confused about, oh, well, wait a minute. The government can't be involved in religion. Uh, read a little bit. God is all over the place. It, it wasn't about freedom from religion, but that's a whole nother show. They had no idea what was going to go on, but they tr they knew what they'd lived through. And they knew they didn't want that in again. And this uh, this new human experiment called the United States, uh, America, they didn't want to do that again. So you look at what they they sat and labored over. I mean, and by the way, if they were found out, it was it was imprisonment or worse. Many of them lost everything they had. You know, it, it, it's, it was amazing to me. I mean, they are still amazing. I, you know, I'll read Benjamin Franklin or Jefferson or, I mean, you go down the list. There's like 30 that you really ought to read some on. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, the government is not there to be your daddy. That was the Democrats' idea uh, decades ago. Well, if we can make you dependent on government, then we can stay in power just like they did with the black communities post-Civil War. Now, before the Civil War, it was just open racism, Democrats. You know, they fought the what they called the radical Republicans. They were called radical Republicans because they were w wanting to give the black people the uh, right to vote and citizenship across state lines. That's where that... Uh, <laughs> That's where that whole anchor baby comes from. Um, but that had nothing to do with the black people then. It's a reinterpretation of that amendment. Now, it, it, it's so obvious. Well, you know, well, who started the KKK? The Southern Democrats trying to harass the freed black men and the radical Republicans to go back up north, 
right? That's the whole purpose, or was the whole purpose. You know, and then they got to the point after the Civil War, well, we can't be overtly racist anymore, so we'll be covertly racist, and we'll do it with something, oh, let's call it, let's call it civil rights. And while many people rightfully supported civil rights because it was the right thing to do, their whole plan was to make black people as dependent on the government as they could, and that way they could achieve the same thing they did pre-Civil War, which was controlling that portion of the population. And when when LBJ signed the, what was it, 64 or 65 Civil Rights Bill, you know, everybody, oh, he's a... You know, this is our, our leader in, in civil rights. What did he say? He said, I'll have those N-words voting for Democrats for the next 200 years. Yeah, do a little reading before you jump to a conclusion. All right, I, I know. Uh, let's check your afternoon drive right back with your calls. All right, uh, 2.46 the time. Welcome to Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Um, every once in a while we do this to give you a chance to kind of catch up. If you couldn't get in on the talk lines through the week, you can take the show in just about any direction. Uh, you pick the topic. Uh, let's go to Guy in Fort Worth. Guy, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Guy? I'm doing very well, Mr. Roberts. It's good to speak with my political priest again. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> you know, we, we live in the day and age, uh, a while back, you had a, you had a segment about what offends you, and right. I wanted to rehash that. Sure. You know, me being conservative, I'm virtually unoffendable. But we we live in a day and time of the hyphenated American, and I'm just wondering when does America get to be a country where you're from? Well, what do you, what, what do you, what do you mean by that? When did it get to be a country where you're from? Right. Meaning we have these, these commercials on TV that, that, that talk about test your DNA, see oh, where you're yeah. from. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know, we just, we have, again, we have the hyphenated American, Mexican American, African American, New Zealand American, and in some cases, Texan American, um, and for those of you about to call me a hypocrite, that was a joke. No, so, I, 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 those, those commercials, and you just hit on one of my pet peeves. You know, I just found out I'm 187th uh, Native American. I want to know my exactly. roots. And I'm thinking to myself, what difference does it make? What's in your DNA? I mean, unless it's a medical procedure, who cares? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, how, and how is that determined? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a big wool being pulled over people's eyes to say, well, you know what? I got my results back, and I'm 32% Irish and 18% Italian. And I just I don't understand that. And it, I just wish that, that we could say, truly say, that we are Americans and remove the hyphen. Uh, Take it away and do it into oblivion. Great point, Guy, and here, here's what happened. You know, at one point in time, it didn't matter that you were 136, uh, 32nd this or that or the other thing. Or, you know, uh, I think somewhere in my uh, in my genealogy, you know, people go nuts over that stuff, too. I guess as a hobby, it's, it's okay. But um, what happened was liberalism ran amok. And, uh, you know, uh, you, one galvanized voice is very, very tough to control. Very tough to control. Uh, I mean, if you look out over a sea of of uh, voters and they're all Americans, they may differ on political party, but they are all Americans at the end of the day. Um, that's very tough. But if you divide and conquer, and you divisions come in many ways, not just political, but ancestral, all kinds of ways. Um, th- this whole thing about well, I'm. I'm African American. Most people I talk to say they're black. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. They never were from Africa, um, or some were. Uh, you know, I've got a good friend uh, who uh, whose parents own paper mills in South Africa. He sounds like he's from England. Uh, but you know, uh, aside from the accent, 
everybody in America should be Americans. When you start breaking down across ethnic lines and ancestral ancestral differences, you know, that's all political ploys. Those are all ways to separate people. Saul Alinsky comes yep. to mind. Absolutely, Saul Alinsky. Absolutely. Uh, Guy, very good call. I appreciate it. Don't be a stranger. Carol in Burleson. Carol, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Carol? I'm doing just great, Rick. I'm glad to get in to talk to you and share what I know. Okay. Okay. Uh, my daughter is involved with the education system. She's a consultant. And through her, I'm learning things. And I don't, I don't think you guys were aware of that in Texas, well, first of all, in Austin, there's a school safety center. Right. And she does some training of police officers that work in the schools. So in Texas, we have school resource officers, and they all carry guns. And like at the Burleson Centennial, the police car sits right out front. I think that's a big deterrent to having some kid come in and start shooting at the school. Well, um, there's actually a National Association for School Resource Officers, and I I think that's fine. Um, I think given the, the climate we're in right now, uh, I would like to see uniformed police officers in schools for the hours of operation until the dust starts to settle on this. Because, um, you know, people are trying to keep it alive. This, this re- Here's what's happening. The Democrats are manipulating and orchestrating these walkouts, these marches, this, you know, no, you never hear any solutions coming out of this. You only hear government help me government save me well that's exactly what the government's been after for the last 25 years is is to raise up generations of people that don't look to the city or the county or their own neighborhoods but instead look to the government for help the government can't keep you safe in a school no i think i think this is a bit of a deterrent and the officers that are in these schools are in uniform and they do carry their guns and then something I learned today is she was telling me that in Dallas, Dallas ISD has their own police department and has a separate chief of police than the Dallas Dallas City Police. And I, I didn't know that, so I didn't know if you guys knew that or not. Yeah, school resource officers are fine, and I, I support them. Um, but in this situation, in the climate we're in right now, um, at least in the short term, I think uniformed police officers, well, first of all, Dallas needs to hire about 800 more officers. And then on top of that, start paying them something uh, where they don't have to move to get a living wage. Uh, After we do that, uh, maybe we can put a uniformed police officer inside schools, I don't know, from, uh, you know, eight to three or whatever it happens to be. Uh, Yeah, I think the school resource uh, officers, uh, that's that's great. That's good. Um, You know, I, I don't know as much about the training as I do about police officers, because I have family members that are in law enforcement. Um, But, uh, you know, hey, anything that could help, Carol, anything, uh, I'm uh, I'm supportive of. Um, And I, you know, if you go to WBAP's uh, uh, website, uh, or excuse me, Facebook, what is it, uh, Facebook WBAP, I guess, and you scroll about halfway down, uh, you'll see hashtag put God in prayer back in schools. I think uh, for any long-term fix, you're going to have to bring back responsibility for action. I think you got to bring back biblical principles that the country was founded on. Well, Rick, I'm not at one of your Christian. Doesn't matter what your theology is. Biblical principles work for everybody. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a, a Jew or a, a Catholic or um, a Hindu or Muslim, biblical principles work for every theology, period. You know, uh, so it, well, as soon as we start holding uh, uh, students and faculty accountable in that regard, I think then you'll slowly see a change uh, to where we didn't shoot everybody up when we got upset about something. Um, and that may seem Uh, oversimplified, but it's not a simple solution. We didn't get here overnight. We're not going to change it overnight. And until we do, I think think we need police officers in schools. And it gives me no pleasure to say that. They've got other things they can be doing, and a school shouldn't be someplace we have to worry about. But we have raised up generation after generation of screwed up kids, and a lot of parents ought to be held culpable. All right. 
uh, to uh, see, I, I feel like I'm on the verge of a rant, Lee. Just any second, it's going to come. It's sort of like, you know, you hear the dam starting to crack, and then yes. you see a trickle of water, and then another trickle of water, then pretty soon the whole thing. That's what it feels like today. 2.55 the time. We'll bring you up to date with the very latest news out of the WBAP newsroom with Eric Bushman. Check your afternoon drive. Try to get you out of town or in town, depending on where you're going, safe and sound, and I'll take your calls. Taking your calls on just about any topic, you pick the topic today on News Talk 820 WBAP. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820 WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, three oh four the time. Glad you're along on this uh, Friday. We made it, Lee. How about that? It's Friday. Um, it's been a, been a busy, busy week, and I know it's tough to get in through the week sometimes. Um, I didn't get to, you know get your uh, day in the court of public opinion. So every once in a while. Uh, We step aside, and we will let you take the show in just about any direction you want. You pick the topic. That's what we call it, right, Lee? That's right. One of the only hosts in America who is brave (laughs) enough to do it. Well, if if you didn't get a chance to get in or we didn't touch on something you think we should have, today's your day. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Uh, broadcasting out of Dallas, Fort Worth, Monday through Friday, 2 to 5, your afternoon drive. And, of course, we're heard all over the country. It's toll-free number. Let's go to John in Euless. John, thank you for waiting. How you doing, John? Good afternoon, Rick. How are you today, sir? I'm well, thank you. I have a question for you. Um, do you think, given, uh, do you think bringing back public executions would have any impact on crime, like this Cruz fellow? For example, or anyone like him. Okay, the question is bringing back public execution? Yes. Do you think it would have any impact on these people who are thinking about going into a school and shooting it up? Seeing another, seeing someone like Cruz be put to death on television or something like that? I, you know, I, I, I don't, uh, and I'll tell you why. They are already... Uh, exposed to so much murder and mayhem and death, and not that I believe um, the death penalty is murder. It's not. It's uh, you know, it's a, a penalty that one pays. Uh, but I, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't think that uh, you know the public hanging and so forth. I don't think that would. Uh, I don't think that would do much. Uh, I mean, the last time we had a public hanging. Uh, in this country was in the 1930s, and I think it was in Mississippi or Kentucky or or something like that. Um, but it was, uh, you know, we we took it out of public view in the. Th- I think it was in the mid 30s, like 35, 36, somewhere in there. Um, they're already exposed to so much murder, mayhem, death, despair. I, I mean, I told you about some of the video games. Uh, there is actually a video game that's called School Shooting. And you operating the controls uh, can walk in a school and just start shooting people. I, I mean, I, you know, luck. When 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 we say too much exposure to too many things, um, I, I'm not saying that alone causes this. But if you don't have a stable base, if you don't have a parent that knows how to parent, then you know you're going to pick up uh, pick up this stuff, and it's going to mean something different to you than other people. Um, I don't know that public hanging or public ex- execution would would really serve the purpose. I, I see your your I see your mindset. I just don't know whether it would or not. Okay, well, thank you, Rick. All, All right, right, buddy. I pre- I appreciate the call. Uh, let's go to Lisa in uh, Austin, Texas. Lisa, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Lisa? Uh, just hi. Thank you. Uh, first hi. Got to talk to you. And excuse my English. Oh, no, no you, I, I understand you quite well. Uh, great. Uh, I don't know if uh, what hill will be for me, what color I am, a white woman or what. I am an Asian. 
and I believe in God and prayer. I voted for Trump and encouraged many people in my church to vote for him also. And I have a lot of white uh, American friends and men, white men, they own vote because of the policy. Uh, Trump used to uh, support the Democrats and uh, abortion, but he turned to polite and run on the Republican ticket. Right. I consider I consider he as the like uh, the political son. You know the story. Oh sure, sure, yeah. So so, so there and Hillary, she tried by hook or by crook anyway to try to get vote, and she chose Tim Kaine at her uh, uh, VP, and he said he uh, Catholic and he pro choice. I wonder if she thinks she told him maybe she got the, the Catholic vote. I wonder. Uh, yeah. I, you could you could add that you could add that to the list of forty two excuses that she's she's come up with. Um, look, Lisa, you know when it comes to Trump, I, I'm I'm not looking for a pastor. I've got one of those. Um, I, if if I have a, a spiritual need. Uh, then I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna dig into the word, and I'm gonna go to other people that know more about the theology than I do. I'm not looking for a president as a role model. I'm, I'm hoping I can be that to the kids, and if, if not, then, you know, um, you know, at least partially, um, you know, fill that role. Um, I, I don't view a president as a role model. I don't view a president as a spiritual leader. I view a president as a guy that can add two and two and usually come up with four, uh, a person that will defend the sanctity, sovereignty, and security of a nation. And that means getting in uh, foreign leaders' faces once in a while, not, uh, not apologizing for everything we do. Um, yeah, I, you know, the, the stormy people have said, how come you're not talking about Stormy Daniels? That's because it's true. I don't know if it's true. You don't either. If it is true, so what? I don't care if you had sex with a hundred porn stars at the same time. Actually, it'd be kind of impressive. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether he did or whether he didn't. Uh, but that's not why I hired the guy. You know, I hired the guy to bring back, um, you know, I don't want to be another dog in the yard. You know, if you're not the lead dog, the view never changes, as they say, right? Well, we needed to get that back, and we're starting to get that back. You know, the problem in the previous eight years was at the end of the day when the dust settles, our enemies no longer feared us, and our allies no longer trusted us. You know, that's a pretty bad place to be in. Um, especially dealing with the Middle East, I can tell you, having dealt with them in, in business, it's not the money. I don't care about the money. It's uh, the person that's the loudest, most aggressive, most heavy-handed. That person gets respect. I know it's nuts, but that's the way they view the world. You know, the problem with, with you know, the free-to-be you-and-me-hug-a-tree folks is they think as long as you're nice to somebody, they'll be nice to you. That's not the way the cultures are across the globe. They don't work that way in every situation. I wish they did. We just have to be nice and everybody be nice back. That's not the way it works. So, you know, all this stuff about uh, the porn star and, you know, what about this and what about that? I, yeah, I, I just don't care about that. I mean, I truly don't. Well, Rick, I, you're supposed to be a Christian. Well, I, I hope I am. You know, I, I mean, I know who God is and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and you know, I pray to him every day. You know, I don't pray to Donald Trump. You know, I looked at Donald Trump to keep jobs increasing, uh, to keep our, you know, our spending in check, to make sure our military is ready to go at any time. But, I, you know, I don't hit my knees to Donald Trump. So, you know, you can take that argument down the road with you if you want. Uh, Lisa, good call. Very good call. I appreciate it. Let me step aside very quickly. Check the afternoon drive on this Friday on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 18 minutes after the hour. It is Friday. Every once in a while we do this. I know it's tough to get in through the week. So uh, we'll let you pick the topic. Whatever you want to take uh, any direction you want to take the show, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Uh, of course, broadcasting out of Dallas, Fort Worth, but heard across the country. It's a toll-free number. Let's go to uh, Mac 
in Minneola. Mac, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Doing good. Hey, Rick, uh, with this investigation of Trump, you know, way the Democrats and the the uh, Mueller investigation is really they're just trying to railroad Trump because they've already done that to you know several of the people that was on his his uh, team. So, what do you think the American people are going to do if they actually do impeach him? And it's basically they're just railroading him. Impeach him for what, Mac? Well, that's just it. Yeah, the, you know, the st- all they have to do is try and find something in his business or, you know, just anything. Well, kind of like what they did with, uh, oh, I can't think of the guy's name that was on Trump's team, but they got him for some kind of financing thing. Uh, I don't know of an investigation, an ongoing investigation, that uh, that anybody's talking about. The Russia investigation just, uh, you know, wrapped up. They found no collusion. No, but Mueller, he's still investigating. Uh, this guy's going to, you know, he's just trying to remain relevant. I mean, there's... He can subpoena every, I mean, the, the CNN and MSNBC, every time he, he sends out a subpoena, okay, this is the one. No, this is the one. No, this is the one that's going to bring him down. You know, you know maybe maybe they need to be subpoena, send subpoenas to uh, porn stars. I, I don't know. Uh, but you can't be impeached for that, especially, uh, what, what was that? When was that? That was 10, no, 12 years ago. I don't know. Like I said, I don't care. Um you know, Mueller, I think, is starting to become yesterday's news. I mean, you've been, what was it? Seven million dollars was spent in the first eight weeks of the Russia investigation. It went on for a year. At some point, um, you know, the constituency, that's us, you and me, Mac, we've got to say, okay, that's enough. If, if you're the Democrats in D.C., that's enough of taxpayer dollars uh, chasing ghosts around the room. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what the price tag on that Russia investigation was um, now that it's wrapped up. And what we find, the only collusion we found was possible collusion between the Clinton Foundation and Russia. I mean, why else would they be given that kind of money? I mean, uh, you know why. I know why. It doesn't matter why. Uh, Hillary Clinton's never going to be donning a uh, orange jumpsuit. It's never going to happen. And she's not going to be a cellmate of somebody named Ethel. It's just not going to happen. You know, she is truly the Teflon mom. You know, the Mueller invest... I mean, there's been an investigation or two or three or ten since the guy was elected. He's still standing. You know, the only thing, only good thing about uh, everyone being critical of him is he's out there in broad daylight. You know, it's the best place to hide if you're hiding. Uh, let's get Mac. Good call. I appreciate it. Sounds like uh, you got your hands full there with the boss. Uh, let's go to uh, Donald in Ardmore, Oklahoma. I know it well. How you doing, Donald? I'm doing well, Mr. Roberts. And you? I'm doing okay. My son played ball for the Plainview Indians, I think. Uh, I live two, I live two miles west of Plainview School. Good school. <laughs> How you anyway, doing? I'm not going to keep you long, sir. I'm doing well. Uh, you know the statue deal is just kind of quieting down a little bit, but uh, you might get a chuckle out of this. Uh, Bill Clinton needs to change his middle name, Jefferson. Needs to do away with it. Sheila Jackson Lee, the congresswoman from Houston. <laughs> needs to get rid of her two names. That, you know, that needs to go. If not, she's a racist, and he is too. And then this guy that got elected uh, a representative in Pennsylvania, this lamb up there. Right. And they're, they're saying, yeah, he's a, he's going to do like Trump. He He's going to do his, what Trump does. And, you know, he's with Trump on this and that. No. No, this dude is lying. He's lying like a cheap suit. <laughs> as soon as he gets up there, Pelosi and Schumer are going to put that ring in his nose, and he's going to follow him like a lamb to slaughter. Well, Donald, you know what? I mean, it's only been a year ago that Republicans were firmly seated and in uh, in total control, uh, and now it's uh, you know it's quite possible that Pelosi could be leader of the pack here pretty soon 
uh, if we lose the House. It's, it never ceases to amaze me. You know, and I've said it, time and memorial. I'm a conservative. I'm an independent. I left the Republican Party when Bush turned his back on uh, the conservative base and tried to cast his net for another voting bloc. Uh, that's where, you know, that's where... Uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these other groups came from, um, you know, especially the Tea Party. Um, but I'm telling you right now, if the Republicans can figure out, a, and I'm talking about the Republicans in D.C., if they can figure out a way to lose something, they will lose it. it. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. You know, you got you got control of both houses, the White House, and a record number of governorships, and now it's quite possible. You could lose part of that. How? How do you lose that? How's that work? I, I don't. I, it, it is everybody up there working uh, to feather their own political nest so they can leave. Like uh, you know, well, I've even blocked out his name from Nevada, um, Harry Reid. I mean, is that what's going on? I mean, how do you how do you just lose something that you have that's so important? Because they're working for themselves and not for us. That's why. That's how it works. All right. Let's check uh, the very latest news with uh, Eric Bushman in the WBAP newsroom. Check your afternoon drive on this Friday. And then back to your calls, as promised, on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, uh, 3.33 the time. Welcome the Court of Public Opinion. We do this uh, every once in a while. I don't have a nifty name for it. Um, talk to Rick. How about that? Does that sound right to you, 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 Lee? Okay, good. We'll call it that. Talk to Rick. Uh, you can take the show in just about any direction you want. It's tough to get in on the talk lines through the week. I get that. Uh, so... Um, if you couldn't get in or if you uh, think we should have touched on something we didn't, today is your day. All right, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Now, before I get to your calls, Lee, did you hear about this? <laughs> An Ohio high school senior said he tried to stay apolitical during the National Walkout Day over gun violence, right? Right. He was suspended for remaining in a classroom doing his homework for 20 minutes instead of uh, joining the protest or going to study hall. Uh, Jacob Shoemaker, he's a senior at Hilliard Davidson High School, said he didn't want to take sides in the gun control debate. He said if he went outside for the walkout, he'd be supporting gun control. If he stayed in the common area of the school, he'd be seen as supporting gun violence and disrespecting the 17 lives lost in Parkland he met with the principal the day before the rally for about an hour to find out what exactly the walkout was supposed to be supporting. He said the principal bottom-lined it. It's for students to express themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, that left him wondering if it was a memorial for the lives lost or a show of support for gun control. So he said, I just decided to stay in my class uh, for about 20 minutes doing homework after his teacher and classmates left and locked the door. When they came back, he was given a notice of suspension. His father, Scott, said his son was just trying to stay neutral and did nothing wrong. And he also said politics doesn't belong in schools. Students shouldn't be pressured into taking a side. Um, well, in any case, uh, we'll see how that shakes out. How, how screwed up is the public school system these days? I guess they're uh, trying to raise protesters instead of students. It's all about socializing. It, it's not about educating anymore. You know, it, it, it just, well, I'm, no, I'm not going to get into that. This is your day. Uh, you can talk to Rick. Let's go to Paula in Fort Worth. Paula, how you doing? Hello, Paula. Okay, did we lose her? I'm going to put her on hold, see if uh, maybe she stepped away. Uh, let's go to Brian in Keller. Brian, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Brian? Very good, thank you. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I told the screener that I wanted to. I'm just inquiring because I listen to a lot of talk radio. Okay. And I distinctively remember 
Hannity being on the radio and said that he re-listened to his first two tapes that he sent off to become a radio talk show host. Right. Hands down, Limbaugh is the best. I remember him being on TV. I don't remember what the show was, but he brought out that toy radio set that he had as a kid, and he knew as a kid that that's what he wanted to do. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about when I tell you about that? Uh, well, the reason I don't, I don't. Where I'm going with well, this, the answer is no, because I never was a radio guy until I got into it. Did they put you guys through any kind of special training, or is there like a a college major that can get you into that? Because I listen to these guys, and I literally want to pull my hair out. I could take about four <laughs> minutes of them, and then. I love conservative radio. The guys that can articulate a message and deliver a spot-on remark, but when they go like and um, you know, at the fourth you know, they need to either take a Toastmasters course in order to public speak without saying um, you know, okay? Well, let me or tell you. Let me tell you how. Uh, let me tell you how this works, Brian. Um, the guy that the um and the you know, um, you know, it's it's, and I'm sure I do it too. I I don't listen to I don't like the sound of my voice, so I don't listen to it. Um, I probably, gosh, I'm trying to think when it was. Maybe ten, fifteen years ago, I listened to my first show tape. It was horrible. It was it was it's a wonder I ever made a living in this job. Um, it it's the um and the you know and. The person that probably is is more well known in this business for that than anybody else is Bill O'Reilly, uh, because he has a ver- we all have verbal crutches. I do. Everybody that talks on the radio has a verbal crutch, and it's because we talk behind a microphone. There's not supposed to be any dead hour, uh, dead air. Excuse me. Um, try it sometime. Just you know, put a pencil up in front of you and say, "Okay, I'm going to talk nonstop, no dead air for three hours." And, of course, you have news and you have some other elements. Bill O'Reilly, when he says, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Okay, Bill, stop. (laughs) Just tell me. Uh, That's his verbal crutch. And what that is, and and we all do it, it's giving your thought time to catch catch up with your speaking. Um, We all do it. It's impossible to listen to anybody that doesn't do it at some point. It's, um, and some days are better than others when, you know, everything's running, just all cylinders are popping and your, your brain is working with your voice and it's almost seamless. And then there are other days when you can't seem to line the two things up together. You know, that's where I used to coach a lot of people. And is there a college course? Not really. You know, these broadcasting schools, they used to be pretty prevalent, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I've never met anybody in this business that ever got a job based on a broadcasting school. Uh, I mean, there's not that much to teach, especially for the spoken word format. Now, whether it's music format or some other format, it, it depends on what you want. You're either interesting, you care about what you talk about, you you vet the stories, you find different angles. It's like as long as you go through the front door every day, uh, that's going to get pretty boring. So you got to come in through the window, down the chimney, whatever it is, different angles on different topics. But there is no course that I'm aware of um, where you can do that. And, you know, that goes back to, you know, back in the day, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, uh, radio stations had the time, money, and resources uh, to what they called grow your own. That was a guy that would come in and work nights, uh, he would start in a small market and then go to a medium market. And, you know, his, his talent would progress, hopefully, and until a big market. It, uh, there is no course that I can, I can tell you. I, like I used to tell these guys, they would script. Every, they'd have five legal pads full of stuff. I go, well, do you talk to your neighbor that way? No. Well, you're, you're talking to people. You're not giving a presentation. That's a totally different dynamic. Uh, when you're doing public speaking, talking to an audience, um, nobody 
is grammatically correct 100% of the time. I get emails all the day. It's whom, not who. It's this, it's that. Look, if you, if you, get the, if you understand what I'm saying, that's all I'm going for. I assume if you're looking for a degree in English, you'll go to somebody that's uh, qualified to do that for you. If I can get my thought conveyed, that's bottom line. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, but everybody has verbal crutches. Everybody does. Um, and you can hear, you can hear. Um, I, I started in talk radio hitting 38 states, Canada, and Mexico at KOA. So I didn't have the luxury of spending time in a small market. Uh, I had to learn how to do local radio uh, at KCMO in Kansas City, and then from there to Dallas at another station, and then for 16 years in California, Southern California in San Diego. So, you know, I've been extremely fortunate. In this business, you, they say you're really not in the business unless you've worked at least, you know, half a dozen places, and that's about what I've had, you know, Denver, Kansas City, Dallas, uh, California, then back to Dallas. So if you're, if you're wanting to be a talk show host, um, the only advice I would give you is, is, you know, stay informed, try to, what you see in the headline is not necessarily the story. You, the real story is not until about three or four paragraphs down. Um, and you have to be very, very careful about your content because usually it's, it's written with a bias. We're all biased. Um, but you have to check that out. You have to, as far as your presentation, you know, that's got to be uniquely you. You can, I want to be another Rush Limbaugh. I want to be another Sean. I want to be, I want to be, yeah, you know who that is. Uh, all those guys are unique unto themselves, right? You've got to be the same way. Bill O'Reilly and I used to go round and round all the time when he was a liberal. And what was it, day and date or some news magazine show he used to be on before he became a conservative. And, um, you know, he didn't like the fact I was reading sex offenders' names on the air. And um, we went, that was back in Kansas City. That was eons ago. But everybody's unique to themselves as far as your presentation. If you're looking for um, perfect vocabulary, perfect grammar, um, this uh, talk radio is not the place. You know, because guys are just trying to make themselves understood. Some do it better than others. There are guys I listen to all the time simply because I like their presentation, not necessarily the topics. All right. I probably went on. That's probably more information than you wanted. Isn't it? Lee, did you learn anything in that little uh, Radio uh, 101? I did. Okay. Don't be like you know who. You ready to come in here and take the mic? Yes. All right. Come on. You only got an uh, hour and a half to fill. I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> Three forty-four at the time. I'm Rick Roberts. Your call straight ahead. All right, uh, three forty-eight the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is News Talk eight twenty WBAP. Glad you're along. It is uh, Talk to Rick Day, I guess, for lack of a better name. I know it's very tough to get in through the week sometimes, and uh, sometimes you feel we should have touched on something we didn't. Uh, that's what these days are for. We'll take your call on just about anything. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Uh, this is Steve. Steve, thanks for waiting. I appreciate it. How are you doing, Steve? Um, okay, are you talking to me? Um, hello? Yes. Hello? Okay. Yeah, uh, I wanted to talk about one thing when I called. and Somebody made a comment while it was on hold that I'd like to touch on. First of all, um, my, one of my pet peeves is uh, legal non-immigrants, people here on student visas, <laughs> people people here on work visas, business visas. The legal term for them is alien. Right. The only immigrants here are on an immigrant visa. I'm not going to dignify the presence of somebody who decided to break the law to be here with the term immigrant. They're aliens. They're illegal a aliens as opposed to the legal ones. Uh, you, you can you can search on the terms uh, IRS tax rates for aliens based on visa type. Well, illegal aliens don't have a valid visa, so they're they're not immigrants at all. Uh, but they also are not undocumented. They have fraudulent documents. So every time every time they sign an I nine form and present supporting documents saying they can legally work in this country, they commit two felonies. I don't know anybody who goes to jail for that. Don't, they don't prosecute that. Um, so how is but Cal, California is clearly violating the law. 
by appointing this illegal alien to a statewide uh, statewide position. Right. They know she's illegal. They're appointing her. That is a violation of federal law. I, I want to if if the Trump administration, if the DOJ doesn't prosecute anybody for this, then I'm going to have to conclude they're complicit in it. Um. It, it, because the the IRS is complicit in it, they will not tell you when somebody is using your social security uh, uh, social security information. The Social Security Administration will not tell you either, even though they know who it is. Um, so they they've been aiding and abetting illegal aliens for uh, for years. Well, the and, Department of Justice has filed two lawsuits against California. I don't have them in front of me, so I can't give you the particulars. Uh, but I know at least one of the lawsuits has to do with uh, uh, tipping off uh, illegals that ICE is on the way. I mean, that's a short way of saying, you know, they maneuvered everything at an arm's length to try and stay away from it, but they got sued nonetheless. What he is talking about, what Steve is talking about, California, for the first time, has appointed what they call an unauthorized immigrant. You like that name, Steve? Unauthorized immigrant. <laughs> I, I love that name. I love that name, Rick. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you authorized? No, I'm an unauthorized. You know, I want to know. She came here when she was 14. She went to law school, became an attorney. Um, you could do all that, but you couldn't get your citizenship in that length of time? Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I, that's ridiculous. Well, I, I, what I'm saying is criminal charges because we're talking about criminal violations. If you knowingly hire an illegal alien, that's a criminal violation. Other employers can go to jail for that. Yep. yep. And uh, they're not doing it. And then number two, I, um, I, I, I'm probably more cynical than you are. I think if the Democrats have the numbers, they'll impeach Trump just for the crime of impeaching Trump or be, being Trump. Because they've been, uh, the left has been criminalizing political differences um, for years, uh, Tom Delay, they, 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 uh, they, they, uh, they, what, what is that public integrity unit in right, Austin? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they tried to criminalize. They, they, they would just wanted him out of Congress, and eventually he got all the way to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, and they threw out their ridiculous ones. Uh, Governor Perry, he didn't have to put up with that. They, they tried to criminalize his perfectly legal yep. uh, veto. You're right. You're they right. they rail they rail railroaded Ted Stevens, and they had to commit what the the, the court decided was egregious prosecutor, prosecutorial misconduct to railroad him out of office, simply because they were trying to change the makeup of Congress. So it, it, if if they can criminalize Perry's veto, then they can criminalize anything. And it, and they don't even need to criminalize what uh, Donald Trump did, did to. Uh, uh, get him out of office because impeachment is a political act. If they have the numbers, if they have the power, they'll just go ahead and do it. As and and Mueller is just there to give them the pretense. Yeah, yeah perfect for perfect term. Uh, that's what um, Mueller is. He's a pretext. Uh, has been from the beginning, and uh, you you funded the whole thing. Uh, listen, I got to step aside. I'm at the top of the hour break. I want to thank Steve for a fantastic unauthorized immigration call. That was Lee, that was great, wasn't it? He was. He the, was on it. An unauthorized immigrant call. I like that. What does that even mean? What does unauthorized immigrant mean? Unauthorized immigrant says to me you're not authorized to be an immigrant. So what are you? Oh, I don't know. A legal alien maybe? is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, four minutes after the hour, 4.04 the time. It is the court of public opinion, your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. Glad to have you along. Every once in a while we do this, try to give you a chance to catch up. If you couldn't get in on the talk lines through the week or you thought we should have touched on something we didn't get to, today is your day. All right, let's let's uh, let's get to your calls. Uh, let's go to, uh, where are we going? Uh, Kim in Louisville. Kim, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Kim? 
Hey, how you doing, sir? Good. Hey, I'm going back to the guy that called on the last top of the hour. Yeah, you are. He nailed it. You're our political priest. <laughs> I love you. I, I, that was, I just chuckled. I was like, man, he just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> hey, let me throw something back way back when. Uh, you know, ABC News, American Broadcasting Company, in the evening, I think her name was Diane Sawyer before she retired. Right. They used to do a segment on um, uh, Made in America, and we're really pushing for things to be made in America and said, hey, yeah, it may cost a little bit more, but it will stimulate the economy. This will help. And then it was like when Obama was campaigning and none of these jobs that left are going to come back, he told them to like cut it out, and they actually did, I guess, because they never – Never brought it up anymore, and I always thought that was really interesting. Hmm. I don't know if you remember or not. You know, I, I remember um, it was World News Tonight, I think. I yeah, think maybe that, World News Tonight. I think that's an ABC product. Anyway, uh, I remember a uh, Made in America segment that they used to do. I don't recall. It was a, a male anchor. I don't recall his name. Yeah, he's an idiot, but... <laughs> I, I, just, I just thought it was kind of cool that they were pushing that, you know? And... I. Whatever happened to that, I can only assume that, you know, Obama said, cut it out. You know, don't get people's hopes up. It's never coming back. Well, and, uh, the well, media and him wrong with the tariffs. Yeah. The Obama administration and the media, um, you know, had a love affair. He threw him under the bus a couple of times when it served his purpose. But for the most part, uh, you know, they, they got along famously. It, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what one said, the other one would do and vice versa. But. Um, I, I don't, um, I don't know. I, I don't remember the segment that well. Okay. Well, I remember it was there and I watched it many times. I thought it was really cool. And then, you know, I like a lot of whole other conservatives. I've stopped watching the evening news and just turned the TV off and listen to you and a little well, bit Well, probably if it was a made in America segment and it was, uh, it was produced without, uh, you know, any open bias, it probably made too much common sense. And right. <laughs> it was leaning too much in the conservative direction, so they probably got rid of it. I don't know. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, again, thank you for taking my call. Have a great – get out of there, man. It's a nice house. Hey, I'm getting out of here pretty Thanks. soon, Kim. Go soak it up. You have a great weekend. <laughs> Appreciate the, what you do for us. Have hey, a great one. Bye-bye. Kim, thank you for the call. I appreciate it greatly. This is uh, Spencer. Spencer in Dallas. How you doing? I'm doing great, Rick. How you doing today? I'm doing well. Uh, I had a little bit of insight for you about the chlorine in the tap water story. Oh, and, uh, oh gosh, Plano, right? I believe so, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, so for a couple of years, I worked for Leslie's Pool Supplies, and I did a lot of water tests. Um, I did water tests for swimming pools, and also people would bring in their tap water for me to test. Right. Um, so I don't know how all of the, the like, civic water works works, like how they do their water treatment. Um, but when people would bring in their tap water, I'd be able to tell them, you know, hey, they're, this is good for a pool or it's not. And occasionally there would be chlorine coming out of their tap water. Like they, they just came from their house. You know, they live five minutes away from the store. So it's, it's fresh and they have a little bit of chlorine in there. And you can't really smell it, but sometimes you could. Um, and and, and what, I, what my point was, was it was a regular occurrence. It wasn't something that was like a rare thing that people would freak out about. Some people would kind of, you know, feel weird about it. But uh, for the most part, people knew it was a regular thing. Um, what I think it was, since I'm not involved in civic waterworks, um, I don't know. But, I, you know, what I was thinking was when they have an issue in the water table or, you know, in the water supply, that you know they're, they've got some bacteria or something they're, they're, they're trying to kill they would introduce a little bit of chlorine to sanitize it like you would do with a, a swimming pool right um but it was never enough that, that you would get hurt by using the tap water to shower with or brush your teeth or even to drink it it was never enough that you could barely even notice it well you know you're right i i mean i'm no water expert the reason i i noticed this um remember the movie aaron brockovich you know, won the Academy Award. Julia Roberts, I think, played Aaron. The only reason this is top of mind is because I actually, Bill Maher used to do a show called Politically Incorrect. Um, and Bill and I are friends. I was on the show probably twice a month, three times a month, whatever it was. Uh, Bill and I don't agree on anything politically. Uh, but uh, 
I did a show with uh, with Aaron Brockovich. He would be, be himself and four guests. And, you know, one time it was Aaron Brockovich and, uh, oh, gosh, I used to play Archie Bunker and, and just different people like that. And Carol O'Connor, right, yeah. Um, and Joan Rivers did, used to, it was, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing the show. Plus I didn't have to drive from San Diego to LA. They sent a car. That was kind of cool. Um, and I would sleep, believe it or not, the 90 miles. In any case, I, I did a, a show, uh, one of his shows with her and talked to her probably for an hour and a half back in the green room. And I mean, people look at her and they see, Yes, there's a very well-endowed blonde woman, and it's all fluff. Well, it's not all fluff. She's very intelligent, um, very intelligent. You know, what's going on in Plano, uh, if a community water system uh, conducts a chlorine burn because they're, I guess maybe they've got nitrification, it's because they have failed in that regard. This is according to Erin Brockovich. She's involved with this now up in Plano. Um now I don't, you know, I'm no uh, no expert, but chlorine and ammonia, when you use them together, they form something called chloramine or chloramine. Um, and if they do that, then obviously what they were doing before didn't work. Um, so the ammonia, which is nitrogen, is pumped into your drinking water. Uh, it's just a weaker disinfectant, and according to her, it's not safe. Um, but both the Centers for Disease Control uh, and Texas Commission on Environmental Quality have deemed it safe to treat water with chloramine. I think that's uh, that's where all the pushback is coming from. I don't know. If it were me, I'd drink bottled water until they got it figured out. Uh, 4 11 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, uh, 17 minutes after the hour, it's uh, it's your day. Any topic you want to go to, uh, we'll do that. Uh, Lee, you, you know, we we get calls from libertarians from time to time, right? Um, we do. Would you, here's one example of, of why they're usually dismissed as being uh, crackpots. A U.S. Senate candidate in Michigan, Brian Ellison, is the libertarian candidate who's going to be running, I guess, uh, against the Democrat uh, incumbent in the midterms. He's just proposed a plan to arm homeless people with shotguns to try and reduce crime. That makes lots of sense. That's who you want as a state representative, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, as homeless people, they... Uh, they're getting a lot of jackpots. I think if we gave them a Remington 870 or Express, you know, that'd help a lot. I can't believe the stuff that comes out of some of these politicians' mouth. You know, many times the homeless are victims of violence. They could defend themselves and eliminate crime on the street. That sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? It does. Grenades are too expensive. Grenades. <laughs> yeah. C4, they don't give away. So let's get them all 12 gauges. Just pass them out. You know, I get a truckload of 12 gauge shotguns and just go down to the homeless mission and all right, first come, first serve. What is this idiot thinking? And he was serious. Okay. All right, let's get to your calls. Let's go to Kathy in Fort Worth. Kathy, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Kathy? Hello, Kathy. All right, we lost Kathy. Let's go to Joe. Joe in Breckenridge. Joe, how you doing? Uh, thank you for taking my call, Rick. Yes, sir. Uh, I've got a, a question. Have we ever had a president that was more vetted than Trump? <laughs> well, uh, it depends on how you want to you want to define <laughs> vetting. Um, I don't think we've had a, a, a president that's been more scrutinized, certainly. Yeah. Uh, but it, uh, it seems like that they just keep digging and keep digging. They're still coming up dry. Well, what I, I mean, think about it. From their perspective, if you were a Democrat in D.C., um, struggling to stay relevant after, right. you know, Hillary Clinton loses, of all people, and a billionaire playboy real estate developer ends up being uh, the guy be behind the desk in the Oval Office, what would you be doing? Well, if I was a Democrat, I'd turn myself into the local police department. <laughs> no, you know what uh, I'm that, talking about. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's all. Look, 
we we searched for collusion for a year and the yeah. first the first eight weeks cost seven million dollars i don't know what the yearly tab was and they found no collusion except with the clinton foundation so yeah. uh, i mean yeah they got to keep lo- well I, I got a question for you you know cbs six it's cbs right 60 minutes uh, yeah i believe so i don't watch them anymore well no, i don't i don't spend a lot of time but i have to watch uh, uh in mean, order I'm to do the show <laughs> this guy's funny <laughs> let me ask you should uh they're planning to air an interview with what's her name stormy weather whatever her name uh, is the yeah i think so the porn actress that supposedly slept with trump in 2006 they want to air that interview um is that is that i mean does that make sense to you it, at all it makes no sense at all they they're just trying to find something they're not they're coming up bone dry everywhere they go yeah it it, it, and, it to me i mean look let's after the fact we learned a lot more jfk got around quite a bit marilyn monroe and the whole thing uh but you know nobody nobody obsesses on that anymore i mean yes he was he was assassinated and you know by today's standards he's he'd probably be a moderate not a liberal um yeah it, it, you look at this and wait a minute cbs 60 minutes you know the 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 supposed last bastion of hard-hitting news uh, investigative work. And you're talking to a porn star that's trying to cash in on the president? I, literally, I don't care about that. I, I really don't. She's very attractive. I've seen a picture. Uh, but I don't care about that at all. You know, what I do care about, how, do, how are we doing with North Korea? How's that going? Is that going pretty good? Uh, how are we doing on the sanctions with Russia? Where are we at on that? Uh, well, wait a minute, Rick. 60 Minutes has the porn star that slept with Trump. Oh, well, let's forget all this other nonsense. Let's go right to that. You know, look, everybody, re- look, I'll say it. You know, I support the guy because he's president and he's not Hillary Clinton. You know, we dodged a bullet on that. Uh, but every everybody knows the guy was a dog at one time. Well, uh, Rick, how can you say that? Well, he was. He was, but, you know, maybe he's changed his ways. It appears so. Uh, you know, I can't look in the heart and minds of men, but at the end of the day, as long as he's getting rid of uh, as many of those Obama uh, Obama failed policies as he can and keeping Americans working and stop being a doormat to the rest of the world and building back up the military, that's fine with me. That's why I hire a president, you know? Now, if my preacher... Um, admits, well, yeah, I got to tell you, you know, last week I had a bunch of porn stars over at the house. I'd probably find a new pastor. <laughs> but I mean, forget the thing of uh, Trump. I don't get this. I could never vote for Trump because he had sex with a porn star. What in the world does that got to do with running a country? You know, I, I, I'm not uh, just because I vote for somebody doesn't mean I have to hang out with them. And bring him to dinner, does it? And you know it's going to be a very hard hitting interview when they oh, bring in Anderson Cooper. Oh, it's you know Anderson Cooper. I tell you what, he's the Walter Cronkite of our time. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> good Lord, Anderson Cooper. All right, four twenty four the time. Uh, this is uh, your day. You can take the show in any direction. By the way, where are my manners? Thank you, Joe. I appreciate the the call very very much. Um, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Uh, anywhere you happen to be, it's a toll-free call. This is the day you get to pick the topic. Uh, if you couldn't get in on the talk lines uh, through the week, or maybe I didn't touch on something you thought I should have, whatever the case, uh, today's your day. We'll uh, check the very latest news, find out what's going on with, uh, yeah, Eric Bushman in the WBAP newsroom. Also, we need to check that afternoon drive. A lot of you are trying to get out of town or just uh, get into town. Uh, Either way, we're going to try to get you around the hot spot safe and sound. I'm Rick Roberts with you every day, Monday through Friday from 2 to 5 on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right.
right, 4.33 the time. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. Friday edition, uh, you can take the topic just any direction you want. If you had trouble getting in on the talk lines through the week, uh, we give you another chance to try and uh, touch base on whatever it was you wanted to talk about. Let's go to, is it Cat? I think it's Cat. Cat in Fort Worth. Cat, hi. Hi, how are you, Rick? I'm good. You are really my uh, true political priest today because (laughs) you're the only one I can talk to about this. Um, And it's been a while since my last confession, so bear with me. All right. Okay. My students, I inherited this um, assignment, and my students are doing a civil rights movement research paper. Okay. And I want them to dig deeply into the counterpoint to the movement. Okay. And if I just jump out there and say, you know, it wasn't a really good idea or it didn't work well for the blacks after all, you know, I'm going to be hauled in front of admin, so I can't go that direction. And I want them to find it out for themselves anyway, how, you know, it progressed and how. Now, are these your students? Uh, yes, they're my students. Okay. Right? But I inherited the assignment. Ah. Okay. If that makes sense. It was not my assignment. All right. Okay. But I've got to do it. So now. I want to take them, though, to the point, because I want them to learn from it. You know, I just don't want to throw it out there and just get the usual stuff back. I want them to dig deeply and realize that there's a counterpoint to the civil rights movement and what we know about in the LBJ autobiography and how, and I can't just say to them, you know, here it is. I, I want them to find it. And after they have found out, I, I hope, as they dig deeply. My first question I know I'm going to get from them is going to be, what else were the blacks to do? What other direction were they supposed to take? I mean, how did they know it was going to go politically awry? Right, right. Well, and, I, I think you have to you have to look at if if you're talking about LBJ in 1964. Uh-huh. Um, I am. You have to realize why that was done. And to realize why that was done, you have to go back a few more years. Mm-hmm. Um, in the landmark uh, 1950, I don't remember the year, but the, the Brown versus Board of Education, I think it 54. was 54, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that racial segregation in schools was unconstitutional. Everybody knows that. So the 10 yeah. years that followed uh, depends on who writes the history. Uh, they'll say, oh, it was it was wonderful, the African-American Civil Rights Movement as nonviolent demonstration won thousands of supporters. Mm. Well, yeah, but there's another side to that, too. You know, oh. in 55, the Montgomery bus, bus boycott, um, you know, that sparked uh, the refusal of Alabama Rosa Parks. Remember, everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the strength of the civil, ri- uh, civil rights movement got bigger, then JFK made a, I mean, he was, to me, uh, he was more important than LBJ. LBJ, exactly. uh, LBJ's chronicled in his bi- biography as saying, and, and again, you have to know what happened before 64. He said, uh, by signing that, he said, I'll have those N words voting for Democrats for the next 200 years. Uh, that was the shift. You know, a lot of people say the shift is when, uh, Democrats went from uh, small government to big government and Republicans vice versa. If you will go to WBAP.com, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. while well, I've got you on the phone, uh, Lee, uh, bring up, uh, I think it's uh, WBAP.com. You hit shows, and then my name pops up there some way. Uh, you hit that, and then scroll all the way. Uh, you, that's my podcast page. You can listen to every show you know, going okay. back a year and a half, but go all the way to the bottom. And Lee, what is that titled? It's a history of ra- of uh, Democrats, Republicans, and racism. Is it not? That's it. It's there. Okay. If you will go through that, uh, that starts post civil war all th- uh, right up to where we are well, pretty much today. And to understand civil rights, you first have to separate what they were, who was trying to get what from civil rights um, you know, it was the Democrats having started the KKK in the South, 
Um, they called them radical Republicans at the time, Cat, and they were called radical because they wanted to give blacks the right to vote and uh, citizenship across state lines so they wouldn't have to you know, worry about being a citizen if they moved. Um, the KKK was started by the Southern Democrats to get those people out, out of their towns, out of their counties, and so forth. Well, overt racism was the was the the call of the day, if you will, up until up until um, they realized that we can't do this anymore. So they shifted, and they went to covert racism. And the idea was politically, if we can make them totally dependent on government, the end result will be the same. We can control that constituency and get them to vote for us every time. As as I said, LBJ even said it. Uh, when he signed that bill, uh, you know, either you love him for signing the bill or you hate him for why he did it. Um, you know, I'll have those in words voting for Democrats for 200 years. Well, was that truly a civil rights action? I, I submit that it probably wasn't until JFK came along and legitimized it. Okay. You have been such a great help. Thank you so much. All right. Go to WBAP, go to shows, and hit Rick Roberts, scroll all the way to the bottom. If if they will just read that, I'll make it a I'll make it be part of the assignment. If they'll just read that, I think it yeah. will it will turn their head around a little bit. Well, you know, I'm not looking to sway people one way or the other. I just want them to know the truth. Well, that's it. that's the same thing I'm doing. Okay. I don't want them to. Yeah, I I want them to just know there's something else out there, and you've done it. All right. Well, Kat, there you go. I'll meet you in the teacher's lounge. I'll make coffee. Hey, you bet. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. I appreciate the call very much. Let's go to uh, Dwayne in Fort Worth. Dwayne, thanks for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Dwayne? Okay. Did we lose, Dwayne? All right. We got calls dropping left and right today for some reason. Ralph in Frisco. Ralph, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Ralph? I'm doing just fine. Uh, got a question for you. People were talking about Trump. I want to. I want you to remember this. We didn't hire him for what he did. We hired him for what he's gonna do. So yeah. what he did with the, some woman, I don't care. <laughs> as long as it wasn't in my family. The other. And and the next thing, I, I, my, my my next thing is this. Why doesn't they talk? They're talking about increasing the military. Right. Why doesn't somebody contact Governor Abbott, since it's a National Guard, have him go to the general and say, create a job, shall we say, a MOS, military operative skill, right. of, of a, shall we say, drone pilot. Have them go down close to the border, maybe a quarter mile back, fly drones in the air with infrared camera. You can see anybody coming in at night instead of having the patrols we, down we do, there. We do have – we. Um... You know, I, I, I can't speak uh, for the Texas part of the border, uh, right. but, but California um, has, uh, they use drones all the time uh, right. for, that, for, all... for that very purpose, and they seem to work pretty well. That's exactly my point. Why don't we do that? And just instead of having the uh, guard, not guards, uh, the patrolman down there monitoring the border, have the patrolman sitting around. I'm not saying sitting around, but right, have them. Right in strategic places, and the drone will say, okay, they're coming across at this place, they're coming across at that place with a camera because somebody's flying it. He can look and see exactly where they are and say, okay, they're at such and such a point, such and such a point, such and such a point, right. and dispatch them there. So instead of them having just to just sit there and wait and possibly catch somebody, they'll be catching them every single time. And then, and then when they do catch them, instead of saying, okay, we're going to release you, no, just make it to where if you if you get caught, it's an automatic five years, regardless of where. You, it's an automatic five years, and we have a whole bunch of military posts that have been closed. Open them up as a, shall we say, a prison. Open them up. You will stay there five years, no contact to anybody. Since you ran up, you said, we can't contact home. Well, you ran away from home anyway, so you didn't want to stay in contact with them. Have them do five years, regardless. Five years hard labor, and what we can have them do, we can have them build, shall we say, you can put blocks together like Lego blocks and build a tunnel. And we can have them build, shall we say, some type of a subway system and put it in Texas. You can have the walls five feet thick. It can uh, be done by electric. Go ahead. No, I, you're, you're 
coming up with a, a lot of different ideas um, yeah. that, that make sense. And, you know, hopefully this administration takes a look at it. First, we had to have an administration that realized we had a border. Uh, because it's been at least nine years, if you get my drift, since anyone in Washington would say, yeah, we have a border. It probably uh, makes sense. Like every other country on this little blue-green marble bouncing around the sun, uh, they have a definitive border. They control it. They protect it. We had to have somebody that would at least acknowledge that first, and now we do. Um, good call. I appreciate it very much, Ralph. Um, you know, I got a call that came in just a moment ago. Uh, when did blacks uh, get the right to vote? Wasn't it in the 1950s? No, 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 no. I, I think you're confused with uh, uh, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. That act was signed into law in 65 by uh, Lyndon Johnson. It outlawed the discrimin uh, discriminatory voting practices that a lot of the southern states had after the Civil War. They'd give liter uh, literary tests. Uh, in other words, you had to be so smart to vote, right? Um, literacy, that, that's a, that word doesn't sound right to my ear, but it is. They would give literary tests, um, uh, literacy tests, that's what I'm trying to say. Literacy, uh, literacy, liter say it, Lee, say it one time. I can't. <laughs> literacy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the word to get hung up on right there. Yeah, hang on. Literacy, T. Literacy test as a prerequisite to voting. Um, that, no. The 15th Amendment to the United States Constitution adopted in 1870. That gave blacks the right to vote. Um, somebody was listening to the previous caller about civil rights and um, no, you had two different things. 15th Amendment, uh, you couldn't uh, deny someone uh, the right to vote <clears throat> by any state uh, because of race, color, previous condition of servitude, I think is the way it's worded. In other words, if they were a slave, uh, they could vote. Uh, the August uh, of 1965, that was the Voting Rights Act. But no, blacks have had the vote since 1870. All right, at 445. The time, if I get the the literacy correct in that, you ever you ever say a word and it just doesn't sound right? I knew I wasn't saying it right. Can you vote? Uh, no, you I, I didn't pass the test. No. All right, four fifty the time. Now that we've all passed the literacy test, good lord, was that a train wreck or what? It just you you get a word and you get stuck and you just dig yourself deeper, right? Uh, you know, I was thinking about uh, that person that called in and wanted to know when blacks had the right to vote. It was 1870, just for the record. Uh, you know, in American Indians, I only know this because I had to do a, a study on something, but uh, American Indians didn't get the right to vote until 1924. Uh, and even then, uh, Congress, uh, I forget what it's called, maybe I never knew, but it was a Citizenship Act for American Indi Indians. They passed that, which then gave them the right to vote in 1924. But because the states determined who had the right to vote, it was governed by state law at the time, it wasn't until 1957 that some states uh, allowed American Indians to vote. Isn't that something? That, that's just weird. They were here first, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we... Yeah, you just, just sit over there. You know, here's a little fire water. Oh, you'll be all right. <laughs> Are you okay in there, Lee? I can just see your head going up and down. Yeah. Here, play these cards real quick. Yeah, exactly. Uh, before you know it, we're going to have a slot machine on every corner. All right, let's go to uh, Michael in Denton. Michael, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Michael? Hello, Michael. Hi there. Uh, I'm here, too. Excellent. Thank you for allowing me to take the witness stand at the <laughs> Court of Public Opinion before the weekend recess. You bet. I wanted to call about Erin Brockovich and the uh, bomb throwing that she's doing here in North Texas and in typical uh, liberal environmental fashion. Um, the facts uh, are used very loosely. Um, you know, what is happening is perfectly safe and perfectly normal. There was not a mistake made. I'm a 40-year uh, a water professional. I don't have anything to do with North Texas. 
uh, municipal water district, so, you know, it's not an inside call. It just irritates me when outsiders come in and agitate these kind of Oh, things. yeah. Well, it, first of all, you know, when, when Julia Roberts plays you in an Academy Award-winning film, you know, you're going to get some attention. You know, she's been an activist for a long time, environmental activist for a long time. I don't know if she's right or wrong, um, but the CDC... And the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, they said uh, the water's safe uh, for human consumption. My question, I, you know, I'm no expert. I'm not even knowledgeable. What's chloramine or chloramine? It's chloramine, and actually that is a, a disinfectant that virtually every surface water supply in North Texas will be using. And... The reason they're using chloramines, which is the combination of chlorine and ammonia, is very simple. We used to use just chlorine by itself, and that creates a class of chemicals that have some known carcinogens. They're called either trihalomethane, we're getting very technical here, or haloacetic acid. So to get away from those, the preferred disinfectant is chloramine. So we're trying to solve one problem, and she's claiming that we're doing something that's either illegal or unsafe. No, I, I got totally you. Unsafe. So chlorine and ammonia, when they're used together, that makes up chloramine, right? It does, and it's much less likely to form with some precursors that you find in surface waters to form these other chemicals that I mentioned, where there are some known carcinogens there. The trihalomethanes are the haloacetic acid. Okay, did they put, let me ask you, the, uh, I'm almost out of time. I got like 30 seconds. Did they okay. pump Do they pump ammonia, which is nitrogen, do they pump that into the drinking water? They most certainly do. In a very controlled situation, along with the chlorine, to form the chloramines. Chloramines kill bacteria just like chlorine does. They just happen to do it in a much slower fashion, and it's much safer when it comes to forming the disinfection byproducts All right, that I Mike, spoke of earlier. Michael, you're going to have to rest your case. I'm out of time, man. Thank you, sir. All right. Have a great weekend. That's going to do it for me. God's blessings on each and every one of you. That's always my priority, whether you agree with me or not. Uh, pleasure working with you, Lee, the last couple of days. Uh, good job, as always. I'll be back with you uh, Monday at 2 for your afternoon drive. I'm Rick Roberts on News Talk 820 WBAP. Yeah.